So I'm at university and I'm living with three other engineers, two of them being mechanical engineers and one of them being an aerospace engineer like myself and they've been begging me for a shout out so shout out to Carl, Danny and Ben. Wow that was cringe. So anyway my housemate Danny he uh, has been wanting to build an electric skateboard for quite a while and uh, he needed my assistance with the soldering and the electronics. The original plan was to build it over um, the summer last year but we live quite far from each other so we didn't really get it done. Anyway, we've been doing a bit of building on it every so often during the uh, university period uh, whilst we've been living together and we managed to finish it a couple of weeks ago. So I'm going to show you a few quick clips of it now. So before we finished the electric longboard, I wasn't really interested in skateboarding or longboarding at all. But the moment I stepped on this electric longboard, it was it was so much fun. So with myself being more of a cyclist than a skater, uh, I really, really want to build an electric bike. So first of all, I need a bike. So the bike I chose is a Volano Rampage and it's a fixed gear bike or what you'd most likely call a fixie. Now I want to make it clear that the reason why I chose this bike was for engineering purposes only. So first of all, it had to be relatively cheap. Uh, being a student, I can't go out spending you know, a few hundred quid to a thousand pounds on, a, on just a bike for an experiment. Second of all, it couldn't have disc brakes. So the reason why it couldn't have disc brakes is because I plan to mount a pulley on the side of the wheel where the disc brake would usually be which is the opposite side to the sprocket where your chain would go. And third of all, it had to have road tyres because I want it to be relatively efficient and be able to go quite long range. So if you've come from any of my other videos or you've already subscribed to my channel, uh, you'll know that I love 3D printing parts. And probably what you won't know is I'm not very good with metal work, AKA I can't weld. So the plan for this bike is to use just 3D printed components, apart from obviously the belt and some of the electronic components. Since the smallest pulley I could find for the motor was a 14 tooth pulley which is 22 millimeters diameter I believe. Uh, to get the correct gear ratio for the KV and the batteries that I was using I would need a pulley that is 211 millimeters diameter for the rear wheel which I obviously couldn't find anywhere so to be able to 3D print that pulley is just perfect. So without further ado let's get on with the build.
So with RC car electronics, uh, such as the speed controller, they require a digital signal input to control the RPM of the motor. Now this becomes an issue because the electric scooter throttles, which is what I've purchased for this bike, um, do not output this digital signal to control the speed controller. The throttles for electric scooters uh, have a voltage input and as you vary the throttle, it varies the voltage output. Now obviously this is useless to the speed controller because I need to convert the analog signal from the throttle to the digital signal in the speed controller. So I contacted my friend Brett Collis, shout out by the way, to see if he could help me out. So he studied electrical engineering at university and he managed to knock up a code that would convert this voltage from the uh, electric scooter throttle to the signal for the speed controller. And after a bit of calibration and tweaking, it worked perfectly. So obviously being a bicycle, I could end up in a situation where it rains and I do not want this chip getting uh, wet and then failing. So I designed a box uh, which you can sit into and the electronic speed controller will also mount to this case, uh, which will then clamp to the rear part of the frame just above the rear brake. As well as protecting the Arduino chip and also hopefully waterproofing it, it also makes the wiring look really neat. So this is a complete bike. I uh, took the bike out for a quick ride before I made it electric, uh, which is why you'll see these white stripes in the paint around the rims. It's a uh, I didn't put it on to get a you know street cred, you know look cool. It's uh, simply the V brakes wearing the paint off, which is a bit of a, a low quality paint job, but I actually think it, it makes the bike look a bit cooler. So onto the important and interesting stuff, the electronic drivetrain. Starting at the wheel, there's a 128 tooth uh, 3D printed pulley. Uh, it, I printed it in four pieces due to uh, my printer bed not being large enough. Uh, to print it all in one go. Uh, then from there, there's a 800 millimeter long timing belt. It's 15 millimeters wide uh, to get that extra strength, you know, so it doesn't snap. Um, then moving up the belt, it wraps around this 14 tooth uh, pulley, which is attached to the motor. Uh, I then have, I wouldn't really call it a tensioner, but it uh, keeps the, the belt at this angle. Uh, the two skateboard uh, bearings that go into skateboard wheels and the reason for this is to just engage as many uh, teeth on the motor pulley as possible so that it doesn't slip. Uh, here you can see the 3D printed motor mount. It's printed 100% from PLA uh, and I got the PLA from uh, 3D Prints UK. Uh, go check out their website, link in the description below. They sent me a few filaments for free and uh, yeah it's actually holding up really well. I uh, can't seem to bend it at all. It's uh, printed at 50% infill, which is actually quite dense when you look at the uh, hexagonal infill. Uh, this is simply bolted to the, the frame, uh, which is partly why I also chose this bike. This, uh, this part of the frame is a constant diameter, so to tension the belt I just slide it up and down and it still grips perfectly. So on the other side is the motor. It's a Turner G6374 uh, 149 kV motor and I've just 3D printed a little housing on the top here uh, which should air cool it a bit, just force air into the motor, keep it nice and cool because that's uh, one issue that needs to be tested I think. Um, the PLA starts to warp, I think it starts to warp at about 60 degrees which is not far off a lot of uh, what my helicopter motors run at when, when I land the helicopter so if this is going to be under the same kind of stress then I don't want it warping the PLA. So moving up the drivetrain, up the wires, we have the electronic speed controller. This is a VESC or as some people call a VESC. I think it's rated for 240 amps peak and 50 amps constant. Uh, I've just 3D printed a little case and it came with a big heat sink. Uh, for cooling, so it should be fine inside that case. That just keeps it nice and hidden inside the inside the frame. Uh, also hidden inside the box is the small Arduino chip. 
uh, that has the code that changes the, the signal from the throttle to the PWM signal for the receiver. No, sorry, for the speed controller. Uh, so moving up from there, we have the main power wires, which then plug into the battery, which sits in this saddle pack. And this battery is a 6L 5000 milliamp battery. Uh, I took it out one of my model helicopters, and possibly if it works well, if the bike works well, I might invest in some lithium ion 18650 packs to uh, make up a battery to fit inside there. So moving forwards along the bike, the throttle lead uh, comes out here, and I've just cable tied it to follow the, that's a bit loose, uh, to follow the brake line, the rear brake line, and it just comes up onto this handlebar here. And just a twist throttle, twist grip, uh, electric scooter throttle. Uh, so yeah, that's a quick overview of the bike. Uh, it's very simple to plug in the, no, to get it to run, you just plug the battery in, twist the throttle and, and go. So there's just one more thing that I need to do and, uh, and then we can give it a test ride. Sorted. That's a T for Tom by the way, which if you didn't know was my name last time I checked. <laughs> <laughs> First test ride of the electric bike. Got the 14 tooth pinning on at the moment, so uh, let's give it a quick, quick power. I'm gonna give it a bit of a pedal, uh, pedal assist just to keep the uh, you know, motor under stress. So, uh, see you in a bit. Train's working. <laughs> Just check the motor's not too hot. Yes, it's not, it's not even warm. Good fun. A lot of fun. Don't really have to pedal. I think uh, I think if we stick a 12 tooth pulley on it, it should give a bit better acceleration. So let's swap it over now. So we've got the 12 tooth pulley on the motor now. Should give a bit better acceleration because it's uh, geared for lower top speed now. Let's give it a quick run. Much better. It's a bit scary to wheelie because it suddenly just wants to flip. Right, I'm going to pass it over to the cameraman for one final ride. <laughs> Do, do the honours, Danny. Do the honours. Let's see the difference then. Danny's a lot lighter than me, so it should go a bit quicker. Oh yeah. yeah. Ah, oh, you can really 
cool acceleration. Yeah, it's much better acceleration now. I think it's geared for about 20 miles an hour rather than 25. You can feel instant but, that acceleration. Uh, you can fully ride it like a motorbike now. <laughs> so, uh, with that conclusion, let's go back to the studio. <laughs> back to the studio. Back to the studio. <laughs> So as you can see from the video, the performance of the bike was actually really good and uh, the 3D printed parts seemed to hold up really well. Uh, the bike was a bit better to ride with the 12 tooth pulley just because it added a bit more acceleration and also it would climb hills a bit better um, rather than the 14 tooth pinion which was geared for about 25 miles an hour. Uh, it's now geared for about 20 miles an hour um, roughly. But that, that actually turned out better because it matched the gear ratio of the bike a bit better for my uh, my constant pedaling speed. So if I want to pedal assist, then um, it seemed to match the motor quite well. The total cost of the bike was around 400 pounds. I'll put the actual number right here. Um, if you'd like to build this bike, I'll be putting all the links to all the parts uh, required in the, in the description below. Um, you'll also notice that the bike was bought from Amazon. I'll be putting an affiliate link in the description below. Uh, it won't cost you anything, but it will support my channel if you order it through that affiliate link. I'll get a certain percentage of the um, of the cost. Uh, as a few people ask me if I have a Patreon account at the moment. However, I don't think my channel is worthy of a Patreon account just yet. So uh, yeah, use the affiliate links if you want to support me. Also, don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like the video. Um, please subscribe if you're new to my channel. Uh, click the little bell icon next to the subscribe logo. Uh, then you'll get an email notification when I uploaded a video and yeah thanks for watching goodbye